So I had no intentions of making this video, but got into a lot of Twitter conversations, DMs, comments, and uh, here we are. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, a couple days ago, a video made the rounds talking about how native development, you know, Swift, Kotlin, Java, uh, is basically going away and will be replaced by non-native development, you know, web apps, Flutter, that type of stuff. And let me be very, very clear, this is not a native development versus non-native development holy war video. Like, I'm not, we're not getting into that argument. In my opinion, it's a business decision. To me, it's objectively true. You will write a higher quality, better app doing it natively. Uh, however, there are trade-offs to that and there are benefits to doing it non-natively. And again, it's a business decision related to your business. So we're not getting into that war. The whole reason I'm making this video is that I think he's putting out some misinformation about some very key points in his video. And uh, a lot of my audience, you know, responded to me, whether on Twitter, comments, or DMs, like, like the video scared them saying, oh, it made me question my decision to go native development. And, and that's when it kind of really struck a chord with me when I was like, okay, when I first saw it, I was like, man, he's putting out some false information, but I thought nothing of it because I saw it early, it only had a few views. But like I said, it made the rounds and I started getting a lot of people like asking me about it, like saying like it scared them, like, am I making the right choice? So that's when I was like, all right, I, I guess I should probably address this to at least my audience. And again, to be very clear, I have no issue with the person that made this video. I have zero interest in a YouTube drama or YouTube beef. I just felt that some of the information he was putting out was just flat out false, and I wanted to address that. Before we dive into some specific clips and I give my rebuttal, uh, I'm gonna link to the video below. Please go ahead and watch it, watch it in full. Uh, because I am going to clip together some of the stuff he says, I don't want it to seem like I'm taking it out of context or editing it in a way that benefits my view, right? So please watch the video in full, uh, and then kind of come back to watch my rebuttal. But most people these days don't write native apps anymore. Most of the big companies, from what I'm hearing, it's really all about hybrid apps, whether it be React Native or PhoneGap. Uh, there's other frameworks out there as well. So I know from people who work for very large organizations, they have told me that they have stopped writing native code a couple of years ago. They go uh, Cordova, they go PhoneGap. These are all frameworks that allow you to use web technologies HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript, and to uh, build your apps that way. So there he says that most people aren't writing native apps. They're writing, you know, hybrid web apps in Cordova, PhoneGap, React Native. Then he goes on to say, you know, like from what he's hearing, most major companies stopped writing native code, you know, two years ago. Uh, no. <laughs> um, if you guys follow the channel, you know, this year I made the rounds. I only did four companies this year. I did Coinbase, Apple, Facebook, Google. Uh, but last year I made the rounds to probably 30 or 40 and hit up, you know, most of the major companies here in Silicon Valley. So I've been in those buildings. I've talked to people on the iOS teams. I've talked to engineering managers and that is just false. Now there have been some instances where I do, I asked that question. I asked about their tech stack and, and if they're using React Native, that type of stuff. And it has come back as, yeah, we use that for, for maybe like a setting screen or some screen, but the bulk of the app is, is native. You know, they may use the hybrid stuff for, you know, smaller screens. But the key takeaway here is don't listen to me. Don't listen to him. Like all you have to do, go to like, look at your phone, pick out some apps, go to their website, click on careers, Go to mobile developer, look at the job description, see what they're building in. Like it's not, it's not a secret, you know? So uh, don't listen to people on the internet. If you're serious about your career, do your own research, dig into it yourself, find out for yourself. All right, next clip. Same thing with hybrid, right? Hybrid apps are probably at this point, I don't have the, the exact statistics, but I would imagine they're dominating the uh, mobile app development space. So what happens to Swift? Where, where does this Swift language go? it's going to become super marginalized. So that's just more misinformation. And it even does preface it by saying, I don't have the exact statistics, but I imagine. But that's still a little irresponsible to be putting this out to your audience when you don't have the right numbers. Uh, if you guys follow Swift News, we reported on this a couple weeks ago. I'll put up the stat here. Uh, but it basically shows that you know, non-native apps are like 30% of the app store and it's declining. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. This is one study, uh, so it's not the end-all be-all information, but at least it's a study that you can go look at their methodology and see how they did it and see how they got their numbers and then make your own decision from there, which is much better than, I don't have the exact statistics, but I imagine, right? Like that's, again, I just don't like putting out misinformation like that. All right, moving on. When you're looking at technology, you have to consider both the business end of it and the technology end of it. And I have seen this more than one occasion where I've seen very good technology because of market forces, it still disappeared. That's what I think was gonna happen with Swift. So I would not be investing in the Swift programming language. I think it is over. Now it's gonna take time. 
you know, these things die slowly. And Apple's going to keep trying to resuscitate it, of course. But uh, now it's going to become a niche language. That is my prediction. So here he says, you know, you need to pay attention to the business, you know, side of things as well. Agree 100%. Can't argue that. And then he talks about how sometimes the best tech doesn't always win. Again, I agree 100%, not arguing with that. But then he also makes a point where he's not saying this is gonna to happen tomorrow, which again, I agree with, this will take some time. My counterpoint to that would be that by learning Swift and late native development in Swift, you're tying your career to Apple. Now, love them or hate them, they're probably not going anywhere for a while and they're gonna be releasing new platforms. So if you tie your career to a PhoneGap, a Flutter, a React Native, a cross you know, mobile platform, uh, that might be a little short-sighted because you know, Apple's gonna release new platforms, whether it's AR, VR, or, or whatever. I mean, you guys know technology this is gonna look like a VCR in 10 years, right? It, it, that's just how technology works. So I prefer, and this is just the way I look at it, now we're getting to opinions, not facts, very clear. My opinion is that I would rather tie my career to Apple in their native language so I can move with Apple as technology progresses rather than tying my career to a framework that relies specifically on mobile development. Now, that being said, once you learn one language, uh, it's pretty easy to shift. I shouldn't say pretty easy, it's easier to shift over to a new language or a new platform. But, but still, the way I look at it is, I'm tying my career to Apple. Again, I'm an Apple fanboy, I'm biased, putting that out there. Uh, but I just, I don't think that's a bad move. You know, Apple's gonna be releasing new platforms and keeping up with technology, I'm gonna be right there with them. So that's my response to the video. Again, when I first saw it, I, I decided not to put this out, but again, the feedback I got, and like I said, people that I've interacted with on Twitter that I know watch all my stuff were like genuinely concerned that they were making the wrong decision in their career, and this video like kind of scared them. And, and that just really bothered me because I felt like he was putting out misinformation that was causing them to be scared. So that's why I decided to actually make this video. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm happy to have the discussion again. I kind of see where this is going. This is not a native versus non-native argument. That's not the argument. I was just kind of responding to things I thought he was saying that were just flat out false. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Happy to discuss this in the comments. Uh, see you guys next time.